Hey guys, being that today is the 70th anniversary of D-Day, I thought it would be proper to have the next episode be Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. Wait, is that an EB game sticker? Oh man, I bought this a while ago. So yeah, we're talking about Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30, a World War II squad-based shooter developed by Gearbox Studios and released by Ubisoft. Now, it's kind of interesting thinking about it now, but uh, yeah, like I said earlier, this is a EB game sticker, so that tells you how old it is uh, in terms of when I bought this. And I don't even know why I didn't take the sticker off. It just kind of seems a little stupid. It's interesting to think about it now that this was Gearbox's big thing for this generation of consoles. It's also surprising that it was great and released a sequel equally as good within the same year. I say that mainly because at the time I really didn't know anything about developers. I just knew that Ubisoft made Rainbow Six and Bungie made Halo. So it's interesting to think of Gearbox then as compared to now with all the accomplishments they've had as well as all the failures. So first off, I actually got the game inside the machine, and I actually figured it out. Problem is, I didn't clean it beforehand, so it doesn't really work. It constantly crashes, it just glitches and everything, so I'm going to have to use online footage from different sources. I'm sorry, that's not really professional, I know, but that's the best I can do right now, and I really wanted to get this episode out, but I will uh, cite the sources, and hopefully they don't go, they don't get mad. Road to Hill 30 focuses on the experiences of one Matthew Baker, as he is constantly faced with the struggles of being squad leader. For many of you who have played this game, you'll know that Baker really doesn't have a lot of positive moments in this game. Eight days watching my men, my family, kill, be killed. Eight days wishing it would stop. But somewhere in the back of your mind, you know when you come back, it won't be pleasant. God, I hate being right all the time. Fuck! If they'd just been with me! Maybe they'd still be alive! Maybe I could have saved them! Another interesting note about Matt Baker is that he is voiced by Troy Baker, the voice of Joel from The Last of Us. He really adds that deep emotional pain and sacrifice to the character and really shows how much talent the guy has. I felt depressed just listening to the guy, but that's exactly what this game was meant to do, show you the horrors of war. Games like Call of Duty or Medal of Honor were all about the secret missions or the high intensity warfare. This game was about the brutality of war and its effects it had on the soldiers who fought in it. It is truly an homage to veterans and is all about honoring their memory. With that in mind, it was still an awesome game, both gameplay wise and cinematic wise. I don't think there has ever been a game with an opening as iconic to me as Road to Hill 30. Jumping into the future of the story and placing you right in the middle of a firefight, you fight off overwhelming odds while your fellow soldiers are getting picked off left and right. All the while some soldier called Legged is freaking out and arguing with some beefy dude called Mac, who oddly reminds me of Tom Sizemore's character from Saving Private Ryan. All of a sudden, a tank comes up, and you get blasted into shell shock. You look on helplessly as Leggett screams at the tank while madly yelling, You want me? Fucking take me! Take me! Pretty dramatic stuff. This game really grabbed you by the balls and pulled you into a deep and traumatic experience. Then it jumps back to jumping out of an airplane on D-Day, which is only eight days before what just happened. The real reason I got this game and the reason that Gearbox supposedly made this game was because it's a history lesson. It's about one of the most iconic 
times in our history. They had historical advisors, they did a lot of historical research. There's all this effort to try and tell the story as true as they can and as well as they can. And it's really cool to take part in these moments. Brothers in Arms wasn't a game that you couldn't run and gun. You had to be smart and use your squad as a weapon. A lot of flanking maneuvers and strategy were in this game. You would barely take on more than 20 Germans in a mission, but it always felt like a lot more and a lot more of a struggle each time. It doesn't help that the game gets more and more depressing as the story goes on. The closest thing I can compare Brothers in Arms to in sense of dramaticism was the HBO series Band of Brothers. Really, if there was ever a game about Band of Brothers, it would be, ironically titled, Brothers in Arms. Baker takes you on a literal depressing train ride as he sees his best friend die, Alan and Garnett, and several other men die all while under his command. I have to admit that I stopped playing the game for a while just because it just really bummed me out. There was a multiplayer feature in the game, but I only played it for a little bit. I found it didn't work and it lagged all the time, just like Gearbox to release something broken. And oddly enough, this wasn't the worst multiplayer experience of this series. So now for the worth of this game. The single player was great both in a thematic sense and in a gameplay sense, and really had the best story out of all the games in my opinion. Multiplayer was boring, so the fact that you can't touch it anymore isn't really a loss. For how rare the game is, I've seen it off and on, kind of not as so much at stores recently, but it's only worth 40 cents apparently on Amazon. So I guess it's not really that hard to find. So is it worth it to have this game? I would say so. I believe it is definitely an Xbox classic. Mind you, you can also get this game on the PC, and from what I've heard, it works better, so it really is a toss-up. Up to you. So yeah, guys, that was my review for Road to Hill 30. I think it's a great game. Sure, the multiplayer doesn't work, but again, it doesn't really matter. It's all about that single player. It's all about that story, and it's really good. So now, uh, next episode will be Earned in Blood. Is that $14.99?